Volkswagen Sleek CC is a four-door coupe that offers a sleeker yet still very practical alternative to a medium-range saloon like the Passat on which it's based. It's a design now styled with much more of its own identity, plus recent tweaks have made it more efficient, sharper to drive and better equipped. It's a high-class car that doesn't need a ridiculously expensive bootlid badge to stand out, and a very desirable one indeed. Uniqueness is a quality you usually have to pay royally for, uh, especially when it comes to a car affordable enough for you and I to consider. Once upon a time, drivers seeking it in the Mondeo medium range market would pay a premium for a prestigious badge and feel themselves special with an Audi, a BMW or a Mercedes sitting on the driveway. But in an age where so many now do just that, you begin to wonder these days just how special that would be. So what if uniqueness, specialness in a car of this kind were not to be uh, based on the badge on your key fob, but to be in the design of the car itself. Something very different from anything else you could buy for the money. Something like this, Volkswagen CC. The best ideas are often borrowed, as in this case. It was Mercedes who first came up with the idea of a four-door coupe. Uh, the CLS class launched in 2005 as a prettified, swoopier version of their E-Class executive saloon. It was a successful concept that should have been extended down into the brand's more affordable C-Class, but wasn't. Never once to miss an opportunity, Volkswagen took the idea and applied it to their Passat mid-ranger, the resulting Passat CC model uh, being announced in 2008. It had no direct sub £30,000 rival then, and uh, when the time came, 270,000 global sales later for a far-reaching package of updates early in 2012, it still hadn't. Buyers didn't care that neither the concept or the ingredients behind it were unique. The resulting end product was a surprisingly appealing spin on medium-range motoring. By now, this was a model in its own right. Volkswagen's clear alternative to BMW 3 Series style compact executive saloons. Hence the loss of the Passat reference in this improved model's name so as not to put premium people off. The underpinnings though remain solidly based on Volkswagen's mid-ranger. But then, so are those of Audi's A4. It's the dressing that counts, in this case even smarter than before, and matched now to a whole raft of more efficient high technology. Let's check it out. CC, in this case, stands for Comfort Coupe. So does it feel sporty and coupe-like at the wheel? You might not think so unless you were jumping straight into this car from an ordinary Passat, in which case it'll probably feel very uh, sporty and low slung indeed, which wouldn't, as it happens, be a total illusion for, thanks to its sport suspension, this car does sit 50 millimetres closer to the road than Volkswagen's standard mid-ranger. Not a recipe, you might think, for the kind of magic carpet ride that a comfort coupe ought to provide. Actually though, the CC rides rather nicely, especially if you specify yours with the ACC adaptive chassis control that's standard on plusher GT models. Via comfort or sport settings on a button that's uh, next to the gear stick, you can change the ride from uh, being soft and syrupy to being firm and feisty. And if the latter, then you'll want to be at the wheel of one of the more powerful models for uh, they come fitted as standard with Volkswagen's clever XDS electronic differential. This is able to get the power down more easily out of tighter corners. And when I say more powerful, then don't get too carried away, for the range has these days been slimmed down to a modest four-cylinder only lineup after the original Passat CC's 3.2 litre petrol V6 was universally rejected by British buyers. Still, the engines that are on offer are a willing bunch, with entry-level buyers choosing between a 170 PS 1.8 litre TSI petrol unit or the power plant that takes the majority of sales, the one I'm driving here, the 2 litre TDI 
140 PS diesel. Now, um, in both cases, there's a more powerful XDS differential equipped option for petrol buyers. It's the 210 PS 2 litre TSI engine from the Volkswagen Golf GTI, while for uh, diesel folk, it's the more powerful 170 PS version of this car's 2 litre TDI engine. Now, even the least pokey of this lot, that's the uh, 140 PS 2 litre TDI diesel I'm driving here, even that uh, is acceptably rapid. It makes rest to 60 in uh, 9.8 seconds on the way to a top speed of 133 miles an hour, thanks to a decent 320 Newton meter slug of torque. Um, the 170 PS version of this diesel is only marginally quicker, but if you go for the uh, top petrol, the 2 litre TSI, then you really get quite a quick car indeed, with the rest of 60 able to detain you for only 7.3 seconds on the way to a top speed of 150 miles an hour. So potentially powerful without being especially sporty. Passat underpinnings never were, and nothing's really changed in that respect here. So the steering's positive without being especially communicative. Body roll is kept well in check uh, without being taut enough to encourage you to throw the car around. But then why would you want to do that in a comfort coupe anyway? Best just to let this CC do what it does best, namely to waft you around with ease and to devour long journeys with refined relish. Refinement, actually, is one of the things that this car does very well, Volkswagen's engineers having gone to huge lengths to perfect it, adding soundproofing wherever they could and putting an acoustic film into the windscreen. You'll buy this car because of how it looks. Of course you will. There's no other reason to pay a £3,000 premium over the kind of mechanically identical Volkswagen Passat that's slightly shorter, slightly narrower, and slightly higher. And on paper, at least, this CC doesn't appear to have changed very much from what was offered in the original version, with uh, virtually no sheet metal tweaks apart from a revised bonnet. So there are still the same frameless doors, and still, the same flowing side profile lines, the roof arcing in a gentle curve that extends from the A-pillar to well beyond the C-pillar. In the metal though, I'd have to say that things are a little different. It isn't just in the name, this car really does now have its own identity. The more distinctive front end is largely responsible for this, with its smarter chromed radiator grille and redesigned by Xenon headlamps. The uh, bumper has also been redesigned with an extra air intake and these silver coloured winglets that frame the space for the fog lights. There's a smarter side profile too, with more distinctively sculpted side sills. And at the back, above the sleeker bumper, you'll find redesigned LED lights, finishing off the gently tapered tail. This is a very handsome car indeed. As before, the Volkswagen badge doubles as a lid for the boot, but you won't need to use it if you specified the hands-free boot opening device. If you're approaching the car, key in pocket, laden down with heavy shopping, all you'll need to do is to waft your foot beneath the bumper, and the lid will rise. Neat. With the boot open, you've 452 litres on offer across a cargo area that may not be very high, but offers plenty of width and depth, and a space that can be further extended if you push forward the split folding rear bench, a process that's now much easier thanks to these handy boot catches. And inside, well, let's start on the back seat. The annoying two-person only rear bench of the original Passat CC has long been ditched in favor of this more conventional three-person rear seat. As with most cars in this class, there's comfortable room for two people with, in this case, impressive reserves of leg space. Um, possible space for three, though you really wouldn't want to be on the central part of this seat for really long journeys. Up front, the beautifully made cabin is a solidly built 
as you'd expect from a Volkswagen, with an extra touch or two of class in this case, with features like the analogue clock in the centre of the dash. Here I've got the glass sunroof uh, that's available fitted. Well, actually, Volkswagen calls it a panoramic roof, but it doesn't look panoramically big to me, nor, thanks to that curving roof, does it retract backwards. It only tilts up and down. But this apart, it's very hard indeed to find fault here, unless, like me, you dislike the whole idea of electronic parking brakes. The Passat cabin was already very smart indeed, so taking that up a few notches in quality is enough to create an ambience that's just as good as anything you'll find uh, from a compact model from Mercedes, Audi or BMW. CC pricing sits in the 25 to 30,000 pound bracket and within that span most customers tend to opt for uh, the 2 litre TDI 140 PS diesel that I'm driving here which costs around 26,000 pounds. On top of that, if they go for this particular variant, they have the option to uh, spend another £2,200 on plush GT trim. If you go for another CC model, then there isn't uh, a spec choice. Uh, so if you go for the entry-level 1.8 TSI petrol with 170 PS, it comes only in standard trim. If you go for a top CC with either the 170 PS 2.0-litre TDI diesel engine or the 210 PS 2.0-litre TSI petrol engine, then it's GT trim only. But whichever CC model that you go for, uh, you can choose to spend another £1,500 on the DSG automatic gearbox. It's a six-speeder if you're uh, looking at a diesel, a seven-speeder for petrol variants. Before we go on, I probably need to put the CC's pricing into some sort of perspective for you. Car for car, you're probably looking at paying around two to three thousand pounds more than you would for a decently specified version of a comparably powerful mainstream medium range model like, say, a Ford Mondeo or a Vauxhall Insignia or indeed Volkswagen's own Passat. But around £1,500 less than you'd pay for a comparably powerful compact executive saloon with a more prestigious badge, something like, say, a BMW 3 Series or a Mercedes C Class. In other words, this Volkswagen sits in between these two market categories, snaring sales from both. Does it have a direct rival? Well, not really. The only other four-door coupe on the market is Mercedes CLS class, and that's nearly twice as expensive. I would suggest, though, that Audi's five-door A5 Sportback is aimed pretty directly at this car's same market niche, uh, uses essentially the same mechanicals and has very comparable pricing. Whichever CC variant you choose, uh, 1.8 or 2 litre TSI petrol or either of the 2 litre TDI diesels, you should find your car to be very well equipped. All models come with bi on headlamps, daytime running lights, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, sports suspension, alloy wheels, tyre pressure monitoring. Uh, you get two-zone uh, electronic climate control that also cools the glove box, uh, sports seats with eight-way eight, eight -way electrical adjustment for the driver. Uh, there's also an eight-speaker uh, CD stereo that's MP3 compatible, of course, but also gives you uh, iPod compatibility, uh, an aux in socket, and a DAB digital radio, and it's all controlled via a five-inch color screen. Uh, there's a leather-trimmed multifunction steering wheel, Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone and a trip computer. Now, if you go for the top spec GT variant, then amongst other things, you can also expect to find uh, cruise control, uh, parking sensors, front fog lights, leather trim, and the ACC adaptive chassis control system. And of course, there's plenty on the options list. One of the highlights being the clever hands-free boot opening system. If you're approaching the car laden down with heavy bags, all you need to do is to waft your foot below the bumper and the boot lid will spring open. Neat. Other uh, popular uh, features that you might also want to consider include the park assist system that will not only help you locate a space, but also automatically turn the wheel and guide you into it. There's also the electric sunblind and the panoramic tilting glass roof that I have here.
Safety wise, all the main bases are of course covered. So as well as Isofix child seat fastenings, anti whiplash head restraints and twin front side and curtain airbags, you get the usual electronic assistance for traction, braking and stability control to hopefully ensure that you'll never have to use them, along with a hill holder clutch that'll stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions. There's a neat driver monitoring system that'll monitor your driving and steering behavior and flag up with a warning sign on the dash if it feels that you need to stop for a restorative coffee and a brake disc drying system that will make sure that your brake discs always remain optimally effective even in very wet weather. If you want to go further, then you may want to consider specifying the lane assist system there to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. Uh, and it works via a windscreen mounted camera that's also able to read speed limit signs as you pass them and display them on the dash. There's also a lane change assist option. It's a setup that uh, stops you from dangerously pulling out to overtake another driver at speed when there's another car in your blind spot. Uh, you may also want to consider other optional safety cleverness. The ADC automatic distance control system, for example, it's a radar based speed control system that'll keep you a safe distance behind another driver when you're on the motorway. And it also works at lower town speeds too, thanks to an inbuilt city emergency braking function, which from low speeds can uh, either brake for you if it senses that a collision is imminent or at least reduce the speed so that accident damage is minimized. Volkswagen used to charge a hefty premium for its blue motion package of eco-friendly tweaks on mainstream models, but at least that's becoming a rarer thing these days. On this CC, the blue motion technology package is standard on both diesel variants. And that means you get brake energy recuperation and a start stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. As a result, the 2 litre TDI 140 diesel variant that I'm driving here, that's the one that over 60% of CC buyers choose, uh, well it returns 60.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 125 grams per kilometre of CO2, figures that are hit by about 10% if you order your car with a 6 speed DSG automatic gearbox. The fact though that a comparable Audi A5 Sportback 2 litre TDIe 136 PS with essentially the same engine, the fact that this car uh, can return 64.2 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and put out just 117 grams per kilometre of CO2, well it suggests that Volkswagen could try a little harder in this respect. And it's the same story if you order your CC diesel with the 170 PS engine. Um, on paper, the returns look pretty good, 57.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 129 grams per kilometre of CO2, but they're easily beaten by a comparable Audi A5 Sportback 2 litre TDIe 163 PS. Now given that over 90% of CC models ever sold in the UK have had uh, diesel engines, I suppose we should be grateful that Volkswagen continues to offer UK buyers any petrol options at all. Uh, actually, there are two, uh, a couple of TSI units, a 1.8 litre power plant with 170 PS that manages 39.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 165 grams per kilometre of CO2, and a 210 PS 2 litre TSI engine that manages 38.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 171 grams per kilometre of CO2. And in both cases, opting for the DSG uh, automatic gearbox will penalise you less than it does with the diesel models. Um, what else? Uh, insurance groupings range between 24 and 29. There's a gear shift change indicator on the dash to help ordinary owners get somewhere near uh, the quoted fuel returns on an everyday basis. And servicing costs can be kept well in check thanks to a choice of two different servicing regimes. Uh, for cars that don't cover a high annual mileage, 
a uh, time and distance servicing program will suffice. Uh, your CC will then need a garage visit every 10,000 miles. But if you're going to use this Volkswagen more frequently, then you'll probably want to sign up to the long life um, flexible servicing program. Uh, and uh, using this, you can extend the interval between garage visits to as much as 18,000 miles or every two years. So, is this CC worth its premium over a standard Volkswagen Passat? If you can afford it, then I'm guessing you'll think so. If you can't, then you'll probably agree with one of my road test colleagues who, when the very first version of this car was originally launched, commented that never in the field of automotive manufacturing had so much been changed to so little effect for the benefit of so few. It's a valid point of view, but it's not mine. The whole concept of a, a practically sized four-door coupe may sound like a contradiction in terms, but it's been interpreted here in a form that's created one of the classiest models that Volkswagen makes. True, the changes that make up this improved model aren't especially great, but they're enough to give this CC a much more distinct, much more upmarket identity than it ever had before. It's also, to my mind anyway, much more desirable than the entry-level versions of BMW 3 Series style compact executive saloons that you can't quite buy for this kind of money. Here then is a car that's come of age. Style, it seems, is not about the badge on your boot lid. But then, if you're a potential CC buyer, you probably knew that anyway. <laughs>